All right, let's jump in. AAF reaction after week two. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. And I don't know where you can go bet on the AAF down there. I believe like Hollywood. I believe Samstown. I'm not, um, I'm not going to try to speak to that. I haven't been down yet to try to find out. I would out. imagine that all of them would have it right now. Like one is William Hill, the other is uh, Fan. Or uh, I'd be uh, shocked if they yeah, don't. FanDuel. I mean, it's pretty popular. Yeah, it's really popular now. Um, but yeah, go to tunicatravel dot com. You can find more information about all the sports books there. You can call the sports books and ask which one. Easy enough. Tunicatravel dot com got your information for that. Let's jump in. AAF reaction after two weeks. You're all in, right? I'm in. I didn't you, think I was going to be in. No, you did not think I, you I were going to be in at all. very much tempered my expectation. And week one, I was very happy. Yeah. Uh, I was bored. It was uh, my first weekend without football in a long time. And I sat down on the chair, and the kids were, had the iPad, and the wife was doing something around the house. And I said, let's, let's turn this thing on. Let's see what happens. And I was happy. I was very happy. It's a good product. I really do like I, it. I enjoy. All right, so. My favorite thing about it is the instant replay. Yep. And the transparency behind that. Exactly. That is my number one favorite thing about the, it. The the Birmingham Iron and the Salt Lake Stallions, there was a it was uh the the punt return that ended up being a fumble that everybody assumed that his knee was down and it was so transparent. Right? So Salt Lake was up nine to nothing. And Birmingham got the fumble and returned it for a touchdown. It looked like his knee hit, but there was no angle on the camera where you could see it. And you can hear this guy talking the whole time about, I can't see where the ball is from these different, like it, and it's yeah. like six different angles, but like none of them showed where the ball was when his knee hit. But you at least see the conversation that goes on. Yeah. So and it's nice to see that. Like the NFL should up. this is the NFL test league. Right, they'll, they'll never do this. By the way, they'll never. They'll. They'll. The one thing the NFL will not do is be transparent about anything. Well, that's. No, they are but gonna, what I'm saying is they they're should, the, but they're not. They're not. Um, <laughs> so my favorite thing, and which showed me, I really like that. I think it was the Salt Lake Week One. It was Salt Lake, um, Arizona game, and, and I and I could be wrong on the game, but there was an opportunity where it was a completed pass. And the ball comes in, and the guy catches it, and it looks like there's a blur that just goes to the ground. Something hits the ground. And oh, I remember this up. one. Yeah. And so they replay it. Everybody in the booth says, oh, that's the ball. The ball hit the ground. No big deal. The officials move the ball back to its original spot. Yeah. And then the guy gets on the headset, says, hey, you've looked at it a little bit. Do you see what we see? And he says, yeah. Yeah, something hits the ground, but I can't tell is that his arm or the ball. And he said, well, well, what? And he says, yeah, I, I, I can't tell. By the, I, by the I angles, cannot tell you that the ball hit the ground. Like Something so, hit the ground, and it's either his hand or the ball. But if it's his hand, it's a catch. And we have to go with whatever you That's call right. on the field. And the official was like, we all think it's the ball. And we already moved the ball back, so now I need you to look and tell me where the spot is and tell me where the clock is. And so yeah. now the official is doing that stuff, and they're talking back and forth. Even on one where 90% of the people disagree and the replay booth guy is different than them, and we would all say, we hear their conversation in real time, and it made me feel like both of these people were telling the truth. Yeah, If you're talking about an opportunity where somebody's going to screw someone, that person in that booth had better sound like that guy. Oh, yeah. Because he sounded honest. He sounded transparent. He was very real in the moment, and he was just trying to do the best job he could. And I had, I walked away from that thinking, I want this lead to succeed because I need to see this more. There is no level of sports. So not just in pro football, do you think any college football leagues, because college football does have – that booth person up yeah. there. They're the ones that start. The SEC is the one that started that, by the way. Yeah. And and do you think that any of the college leagues will say, we're going to actually record both of these people and let people hear it to show transparency? I think that it would be up to networks, partially. I, I, no, I don't, because I think um, every network would want them to do it. But I, I do wonder 
if like it's the same thing with the NFL if you don't want to let those conversations out because you're trying to mess with people. You're trying to get the better team. You got a Pac-12 situation. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's like, just, and for those that it. don't know what we're talking about with that, the the USC Washington State game where there was just an egregious error and a guy that had nothing to do with officiating called in and told them what the call should be. Correct. To get USC from the Pac-12 official office. Yeah. Not not there. I mean, I'm sure he's watching the game. Well, on he was TV, watching the game on TV. He was but, in the command center. But yeah, but, but that's yeah. It it was no bonkers. So I I I would love to see more of that. So, like everything, and I've heard a lot of people say this. This is nothing new under the sun. You know, the pace of play is incredible. The not having kickoffs, yeah. I thought it was going to be weird. Nope, nope, love it. Nope, Doesn't bother. Well, I can't say the, that I love it. The pace of play is great. I because do not, It does not bother me one the, bit. The commercials. Yep. Like these games are over in two and a half hours. That's exactly right. It is. College football beautiful. needs to do more of this than pro football, by yeah. the way, because it's college football that lasts four or five hours. Yeah. NFL games are three hours long. Yeah, and some can last four. three and a half. They can go but, four if we go into overtime and so like that. These this thing is in. You're out. Um, but it's not standing around even when you're watching the game. Like the commercials have gone to the NASCAR way of doing a commercial where yeah. we never take a camera off the field. No, it's like it's rarely nonstop. are we going off the field. Like you, you got the little box and the sound goes to the commercial and then it comes back to the field. Um, so, no, I love it. I love it. The product, the actual play. Like some people have been giving me a lot of guff. Pat's fan, you know, you had a nothing, nothing Super Bowl for a long time or whatever. And, and, well, you must like it because there's no scoring. Like, look, the product is going to take a while. Well, okay? it won. These they guys only had a guys. month to practice beforehand. Right. And, and offensive lines take time to build chemistry. Uh, quarterbacks and wide receivers take time to be able to find uh, that, that – I guess I can say chemistry. I but think the, those things matter. I think the one place where talent level is just not there, wide receivers just cannot catch in this league. Yeah, it's, I mean they really they really struggle catching the football, and it makes you recognize the talent that's in the NFL. Oh yeah, I mean you've got you know third and fourth you know you know caliber receivers in the NFL that make all these catches. Oh yeah, and and the, these guys are struggling to make catches. So offense is going to be behind. Um, I've had people criticize because you know if they risk sorry if they blitz or rush six people. Like it's a defensive penalty, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, that's not football." Listen, man, if they allowed them to blitz however they want it to blitz, these would be nothing, nothing games. Yeah, you, It'd be you got to give the offenses some time to develop into these things. Uh, but, but I like what what I see. I think it's going to get better. Um, do you want to talk at all about the potential that this can take major college football players away? So Are the you AAF to have that conversation? I the AAF I believe is set up to where they are not going to go in and take players out well, of somebody college. made a call to Trevor Lawrence. That's a part of this league. Not not a part of that this. Was, that is the Pacific Pro. Okay, league. the other league. That's that's, that's Don Yee's. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. so the Pacific Pro League absolutely wants to take kids out of college. And and some kids maybe out of just straight from high school. So let's say let's um, say a kid from college wants to do this. Wants to do the AAF? Let, or let's just, say Trevor Lawrence says, I don't need to play 15 games in college football for the next two years. And and let's not kid ourselves. The $250,000 salary he's probably making in college, we work under that assumption. Right. But you know what he's not making? And, and there's no college player paying under the table stuff happening. When you go to the AAF, Nobody's keeping Nike from giving you a hundred million dollar oh, yeah. deal. The our endorsement Gatorade deal, because you're not you're not tied to this. And if I'm Tua Tonga Vailoa, or if I'm Trevor Lawrence, and you know you're going to be the number one player overall in next year's draft, I'd be looking at saying, "Man, getting an endorsement deal would set my family up for life." Yeah. To where if I go play one of these only ten games now, then, then and it I makes am, the league profile better. I oh, think. Yeah. I I love the idea because I think that it cleans up college football. Yes, to where you don't have all of the the Jay Billises and whoever else that's constantly like uh, all these the, the NCAA unpaid is labor and Jay Billis is not wrong. 
No, no, I'm not saying he's wrong. Worst organization in sports. This is talking about people like FIFA and stuff like that. I think the NCAA is worse than all those guys. But I will say this: like they've got a way that they that they do it and that they want it done. And if you have players that are better than college, I think Jadavion Clowney. After his freshman year, when everyone realizes this guy's going to be a freak, or Marcus Lattimore, or right. La- but Mar- Marcus Lattimore. Well, I don't know that Marcus Wait, not, Lattimore not was Lattimore. that uh, good. Uh, the, the, the who was the Maurice Claret? No, well Claret, yeah. yeah. But uh, what was the the running back for South Carolina? That was Marcus Lattimore, but that he wasn't that good. He wasn't good enough. To, Who's that he the was safety great. for uh, the Saints? Is the he safety? Lattimore too? Yeah, there's a, there's a Lattimore for the Saints at safety. Is he Marcus Lattimore, though? I don't know that he's Marcus Lattimore. Holy Lord. So Somebody anyway, on YouTube comment that crap. Like, so anyway, neither, <laughs> help like, me out. Like, Marcus Lattimore blew his knee out twice for South Carolina. Like, it would have been a great had he come, could have gone and done this. But he wasn't that level. I don't know that he's one of the oh, he was top 100% 10 that running level. backs. He ran 40 con- times for 216 yards against True. a great Florida team that year. He, I mean, he was like... 1,300 yards rushing his freshman year. Right, he maybe was, he was ready maybe to I just, go. And I loved him. Maybe, yeah. maybe I just – He was just ready to go his freshman year. It's been so year. long since I've watched but him But he, he blew out one knee his uh, yep. sophomore year, blew, blew out another knee his junior, junior year. year. No. I mean, he, you know. And, and, and so it's just one of those deals. I, I think this is an option to where if I'm a big-time college football player and I know that my draft stock is set, you can tell me all day long, oh, but I want to come back and win a championship. Man, no. Because yeah, but if you're playing at South Carolina, there's, like, there's no. But even if you're playing at Clemson or Alabama, there is nothing that could. And let's not kid ourselves; those kids are getting paid. You know the reason. The only reason college players are not fighting to get the only people who want them to get paid are media people that think it's wrong because the kids actually doing it. You never hear guff from them yeah. because they're getting paid too much money. Well, you you do hear guff from people like the broke folks. Well, the the people at Northwestern, yes, that st- that That's actually right. filed the lawsuit. That's right because like, because they they are not they are getting, not getting they paid. are not getting six figure deals. Yeah, um, so yeah, it, it, it's one of those things. I think this is a good because if you are that elite echelon star, maybe not Nike or Under Armour because the league right now has a deal with starter, but like Gatorade or Powerade, yeah, Tag Watch. I mean, somebody can come in and throw you major a, a good jillion dollars money. and say, "Here you go." Yeah, Here, I, nobody I can touch idea. twenty million dollars. Like the XFL has already said that. Yeah, we're probably gonna we're gonna poach some kids. Yeah, and the Pacific Pro League, which. I don't know that all these leagues are going to survive. So I the don't AF think league, so. I thought, did the worst thing in. You don't want to be first. You want to be right. And when I heard today they didn't have the money, I thought, see, this is the problem. You tried to get it out there too fast, and you weren't ready. Yeah, and now your league collapsed, and that was wrong. It was bad reporting. It was bad reporting. But I, th- they, I the think now AF, they're the ones that are going to survive. They are actually going to survive because they are willing to try all this new stuff they have set it up when we as see a them. as a developmental league. So the Pacific like, they're league, not trying to compete. That's right. The Pacific League and the XFL are now going to be compared to them. And yeah. if you're not as good as them, you're done. Yeah. You're done. We're taking you out back, we're well, shooting and, you in the head. So we love football. We don't need that much football. The XFL has come out with Bob Stoops. That's right. Right? Which is big name, great, all that. We'll but see how that works out. But the AAF is NFL guys. That's right. And, and it is guys that have the ears of the people in the NFL. Like, if the XFL can come in with staffs like that, with with Bill Polian, which I know that you don't like. That's fine. Bill Polian. But that's but, a personal argument. He is he, respected in the NFL world. Exactly. And, and, and Bill's done. You're talking about other guys in this league that are going to be making these decisions. Right. Then their voices are respected. Yes. And that's, that's what I'm saying is the AAF is respected by the NFL. No, I mean, the NFL – Likes it enough that they actually signed a television contract with them. Correct. Like that's that's no. how much this matters. So I'm, I'm very pro this league. I'm now curious to see the other leagues because I don't think there's enough of this pie to go around for four of them to eat. I agree. The NFL will be the monster, and somebody will be the kitty table. When the the XFL is set up in in cities that already have NFL, and I understand like it, Atlanta's got a team. Um, so but Atlanta's going to have three of these teams. I mean, you got you got San Diego, Salt Lake, San Antonio, Arizona, and Arizona is is set up in uh, Tempe. 
right? I have no Tempe, idea. Tempe, Arizona. I play. I pay that little attention to where these guys are from. And they, well, they play in uh, in Arizona State's stadium because yeah. I'm not worried about awesome. where they're from. Uh, Memphis, I, I like Atlanta, Orlando, Birmingham, Atlanta. Like, okay, you already got the Falcons. Maybe don't need to worry with o- Orlando and Jacksonville. Or the Orlando's like the nicest version of Florida you're gonna get. Yeah, and, but Orlando's like great. Like the they play worst, in UCF the Stadium. Big city. It's yeah. it's great. Like what they did with this. Like the XFL is in a ton of cities that already have NFL teams. It's I think it's gonna be tough. To get people interested. Now, obviously, because it's Vince McMahon, it will be promoted correctly. It will be it'll be put out there and everybody will tune in the first week to check it out like they did back in two thousand one. But well, like I did with this. I was ready to crush this. Oh yeah. I mean I you, you were talking one game. I remember telling you I was excited about it, and you immediately were like We're not talking don't, about it. Don't come to me with this crap. That's right. Well, I just I look, I don't I've seen these things fail. I've gotten my hopes up. I'm not. I'm not doing this. If it's great, I'll tell you. But I'm not. We're, we were not going to try to have an intelligent conversation about it before we saw football. Yeah. Before we saw the product, because we literally would be speaking just so Gibberish. out of our asses. It, it's not even funny. I won four out of five bets that first weekend. I didn't I even try this week because there was there was such a well. One the the totals were so high, and I was like. They've been practicing a month. There is no it's way these offenses unders. are. So I, I bet all unders. I lo- the one under that I lost was uh, was the Arizona. With it was it Salt Lake, San Diego, whichever one. Um, but because that one was like thirty eight to twenty two. Yeah. And as it was going on, I'm like, you got to be kidding me! Like, what are they scored sixty points? Um, but I hit that, and I knew that Memphis was going to be terrible because their offense coordinator quit, and I liked Birmingham's defense. And you know, I mean, well, it just well, I've made I've made two bets in this league, two. I won them both. What, what do I'm gonna make unders? the same? Nope. I'm gonna make the same bet next week. Betting against Memphis. Nope. And I'm gonna make the same bet after that. I'm gonna make the same bet after that. I'm just gonna keep betting on Steve. Okay. okay. I'm just I'm just never gonna stop. That's doing totally that. reasonable. I'm just never gonna stop doing that. I can completely. And if he loses that. five in a row, it's fine. It's fine. This week, I love that man. So the Birmingham Iron, the Orlando Apollos, the Arizona Hotshots, all two and zero. They're one and zero in their divisions. The San Antonio Commanders, they are one and zero in their division. They're one and one. San Diego Fleet, one and one, zero and one in the division. Salt Lake Stallions, zero and two, zero and one. But Salt Lake at least looks like they got some fight. I was gonna say Salt Lake looks like a decent team. I think the, they've played some tough teams. The two worst teams in the oh, league. It's not close. It's separated by close. six hours. Atlanta Legends and the Memphis Express. We're bad, man. The Memphis Express is it, like this offense is now Zach Stacy, the running back, looks great. He looks like Listen, he's back at Vanderbilt again. Anybody, I was texting you and our boys from 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 Northwestern, our, our West Lot Power guys, this weekend. Whoever was in charge of drafting Hackenberg in the Jets, I hope I hope they're fired, and I hope nobody else has picked them up. Whoever said. Yeah. This is the pick. This guy can't play. No. And there were people that thought, well, we need to build the team around him. We need to give him an opportunity. Let's not draft a, a, a young quarterback yet. Let's that's, not go get Darnold or, or whoever they were going to end up with that's, last that's year. bad. This guy's bad. Yeah, he's, he's – I mean, I thought, hey, we got the closest thing to an NFL quarterback. He's been on the roster the last couple of years. He's been the guy that all he needed was an opportunity, and they never would give him an opportunity. Nope. Oh, now, part of this is the offensive line is like – Terrible, no, 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 no. and they have I'm not played. Them an excuse and they've played Arizona and Birmingham, which pretty there, good defenses. There was an opportunity so, last week. There was a situation twice where he was openly screaming at the coaches, screaming at them. Now both those times he drove them down and scored a touchdown. He was one of them was on for the two point try. Yeah, after they had just scored a touchdown, he was screaming at the coaches like hatred, yelling, "Get your shit together!" Screaming. And my thought is this: I, I, this is, this is not what I was thinking. If I was one of those coaches, I would knock his ass out. <laughs> he is not that good. No, you look. There is a level where you can talk to people that way. He's not that level. Oh, he is so I, far there, from that level. There's nobody in this league that's at that level. You, I agree. You don't do that. And that was that was firing me up. Lost a lot of respect for Singletary. Yeah. 
Also, I've seen the product on the field two weeks in a row. That kind of hurts his respect lost, as well. uh, lost a lot of respect for Singletary. I there thought too. we had one of the best coaches because I liked Singletary. Well, Maybe he's so losing it. Defense, yes. Uh, Offense, there was no chance. And uh, and how Mummy quitting we'll see, before? We'll see how good his defense is this week. Uh, yeah, I mean he he got to go up against Steve. Papa's coming to town. Who head ball coach? Can somebody get him a visor? I know we probably don't have a lot of AF gear out there. Can we not? Visor. The last two games he's had a hat. Oh, he's been wearing a baseball cap. We need to get him a visor. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I don't about think that. the AF has visors. Somebody make him a visor. You think Steve's going to get was, a bald spot? If I, oh, no, I don't, no. Uh, a, no, he's got great hair. <laughs> but, but B, th- there's no question. About, if I had like an embroidery shop right now, I would just bootleg off their logo and make it. Make him a visor and just, and just send it. it. To him. I just send him a bunch of them. Like, just be like, this is from me. One for the every game the rest of the I just, season. I just love you. All the way through the playoffs. This is for 30 years of my life of you just being in it. Good gracious. All right. As always, show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. TunicaTravel.com, where you need to go for that. Hit subscribe for us. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think about the league. We want to know what you think. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.